Voice test. Hello again. Welcome back. Good to see you. I am recording again. I passed the voice test finally. An hour later, okay? Because this thing, uh, it updates itself and it resets everything, which is brain surgery if you haven't used it for a while. So I'm an hour behind here, but that's all right. It put me in a cheerful mood. So, what are we doing today? Oh, yeah. Welcome to Why Terahertz for UFO UAP Propulsion. This will be a quick one, I hope, and because I've been busy. I've been gone since May from here, but I've been getting some things done. Mainly, I'm focusing now on working on this. I want to get on APEC and present if they'll have me. So, I'm trying to boil down all this hot air of mine into one hour and I'm gonna read it off this web page which I'll leave up and use these images as my slides because I'm comfortable with that. I've never done a PowerPoint or anything like that. So I think I can do that on Zoom through OBS, whatever I have to do. But we're not here to talk about that now, so why am I talking about We're here to talk about this. We're going to go over this Twitter moment, which is a collection of tweets linked below. It's public. You don't have to be on Twitter. You don't have to be logged in or anything like that. But this gives me some convenient talking points to babble about. And hopefully I'm right and we all learn something or something Something in the middle there. So let's get started. Shall we start here? Nope. We start here. We did that. So now we're on the moment. Let's just move it down here a little bit so we don't get lost. And let's get started. So, uh, yeah, everyone, anyone that's listening to this uh, in the early days here is going to know why I'm talking about terror hurts. Because this UFO, UAP, anti-gravity, time warps, all that stuff. A big nugget, a big breadcrumb was dropped uh, about some terahertz crash retrievals. 
And whether that happened or not, they're working on this stuff at uh, Wright, Patterson, Wright State near Wright Patterson. And a lot of that's public information and it's interesting stuff. So why are people talking about terahertz? What does it mean to me? The average interested person who's not a brain surgeon like Dr. PhD Puthoff here. And well, that was my question too. Uh, so what are we gonna do here to figure out what the heck is this? Why does that matter? So this collection of tweets should explain it because I got tired of putting half explanations on Twitter and half thoughts and whatever. So you put it all, I put it all in one place so I can just have one link and go back to that and not try to remember what I was saying whenever. So, um, there, this little graphic here, we'll go over to, I guess we should start with the tweets. So, once upon a time, alien scientist, most of you know him, he's linked right here. Go follow him on Twitter and YouTube. If you don't already, you probably already do. He put out a tweet on August 28th, in the middle of when I'm working on this thing, and I needed a break, and so I, started, I, I answered it. He asks, Jeremy Riss is his real name. Why would UFO metals have these layered photonic band gaps tuned to THZ, that's terahertz, spectrum built into the surface of their ships? My current hypothesis, his, bosonic gravity lasers tuned for HFGWs, high frequency gravity waves, which is a is a good, you know, that's his hypothesis, that's good, it could be that. Could be some other things, people have speculated. The word's thrown around a lot. So, I couldn't let that go, it was time for me to have a coherent answer all in one place, so I took a stab at it. Now this next tweet here is about the different states of light. It's kind of here for decoration uh, because different theories have been uh, proposed around the different states. The vacuum state, the squeeze vacuum. I don't know what that, I know I haven't heard about this one too much, but this, uh, I'm mainly concerned, you know, those are rather exotic. Those deal with the vacuum and things like that. I'm more interested in the phase state and the squeeze coherent states, which is kind of like light uh, normal, normally, although uh, it can go through a sub wavelength waveguide, which isn't quite normal, but it's not exotic. Those are my definitions. Don't hold me to them. Um, because these you know, vacuum state, that's how you're going to do that, I don't know, but it, theoretically, all that can be done. So I started answering him. Here's my take on it. Or, this is my answer to him, you know, which, he's throwing out his hypothesis, this is mine. Or, using this common definition, quote, it is within the frequency range of 0.1 to 10 terahertz corresponding to wavelengths of radiation from 3,000 to 30 picometers. Hal was never more specific than, quote, terahertz that I know of. In other words, we got a breadcrumb that said terahertz, but nobody ever said, well, it's two terahertz, five, whatever it was. If they did, I missed it, whatever. So what do you mean by terahertz? I've been saying for years now, well, it probably means one terahertz, which is minus 375 degrees Fahrenheit, which roughly, you know, that's a temperature, you know, a mile from the moon, okay? It's not deep state, it's space, it's not minus 459, nor is it an inch from the sun where it's as hot as it blazes. So it's some, you know, it's some part of the spaceship uh, that you would use 
You flip that on when you're a mile from the sun that's made up, or uh, the moon. And, uh, you know, you use that to pull space through it. You pull it in, it's a sub-wavelength waveguide. Which that, what that would do is shrink the normal photon uh, down to, to some percentage. I think he was saying it's 20% iteration, something like that. And then, you know, you explode it out. This is my opinion. But that's what the, roughly what the thing does anyway. So I'm thinking, well, maybe it's that, you know, when you, you, that part of the ship kicks in when you get it in that area. But then I ask myself, you know, what's general? When people mean terahertz, they mean, they generally mean, because no one talks about this, but they must mean something in general. So that's the general range. And uh, you can ask Google that. This link right here will tell you that, you know, it's some scholarly source. But if you just ask Google, what is terahertz? It'll say, well, it's typically the... That, this link comes up. They quote this and they give me that link. So that's that's what we're talking. That's what I'm talking about today. I'm going off that common standard usage. If that's what he meant, that I don't know. That's up to him to tell us, or we can guess at it. So, uh, but that's another story. Now this this. Uh, tweet you're looking at here that goes to another moment which goes to another video um, and it goes down the whole history of him mentioning terahertz and my what I say about it and what alien scientist says about it and whatever and uh, I guess to, to the stars Academy had something to say you know it, that's another story Click on that, that's linked right here, linked and linked up. The next tweet is just a pretty picture showing roughly what we're talking about. This is generation of terahertz, which is the opposite of absorbing and reflecting and uh, emitting and all that, but it's, it's, you know, what we're talking about is waves of light like this. So if you took, took this link, Optic, uh, take what they're saying, turn it inside out, upside down, twist it around. You got kind of what we're saying here, close enough. Any, okay, the next tweet. So we say, with regard to the range of 0.1 to 10 terahertz, which is what this entire video and moment and stream of tweets is about, that's what we're talking about. So we're going to take that we're going to con convert that to, to temperatures, which is something that I, as far as I know, I'm the first one to put that together to, to, to say, well, what is one terahertz? Well, it's roughly 300, minus 375. All right, well, what good is it? That's where I come from. I'm an engineering background. I was a lawyer, kind of logical. I'm retired now, but, you know, I, it's my manner of thinking. So, uh, then what did I think? I thought, oh yeah, let's put these temperatures in, or these terahertz into temperature. Let's put that range in there, and I have these links, and it's, this is why it's a pain and why I finally put it in one place. You have to, tra you have to, uh, tr not translate, but, uh, convert terahertz to Kelvin to Fahrenheit and it's not smooth on the internet people don't think that way it's not set up that way it's not practical for everyday use whatever so you have to go through a couple of links and every time this would come up on Twitter I'd be going through a couple of links and figuring it out again and it's uh, it's a pain because you keep thinking you're making mistakes and uh, double checking the double check and Wait, 0.1 or was it 0.01? I was wrong, oh no. So I finally did it again, checked it 10,000 more times, put it on here, put the links on to the conversion sites, and we're saying here, okay. Here we go, this is the first bit of confusion. 0.1 terahertz is 100 gigahertz, all right? For some reason that's standard, that's the way they 
hook it up on the converters. And 100 gigahertz equals 4.7 whatever Kelvin. That's a temperature. That's a scientific one. You're not going to see that on the news. And I don't think. And uh, that equals to 400, minus 451 Fahrenheit, which is roughly about as cold as it gets in deep space. It gets a little colder, they say, but, you know, what's minus, uh, what's a few degrees when you're already dead? So, uh, where are we? Uh, all right, so that's roughly what it is. So the range bottoms out around there. Conveniently, all right. And here's another tweet about how the conversion converts, whatever. And here's another tweet spelling it out with links that roughly that's the temperature of the coldest parts of space. So that would be convenient if your spaceship could breathe that in, blow it out the skin, or through a uh, what were they calling it? A, not a general, but a, you know, I don't know. A reactor. You pull it in, you react it by pushing it out. Okay, you can call it that too. So it's in the skin, it runs through the thing, it goes wherever you want. And now we look at the other end of that terahertz scale. 10 terahertz. So what's that equal? That equals 400 something Kelvin, which to us Americans is 400 degrees Fahrenheit, very hot. How hot is it? I don't know. That's too hot. So just eyeball, where would you, you know, shift into that gear? Of course, it's an automatic. You're not gonna manually shift it, I don't think. But that part of the waveguide slash the breeze, whatever it is, if it's real, your metamaterial that I think you're going to be using. Let's be clear about that. If I haven't been already beating it to death. Uh, you'll be using that around, flying around Mercury. Say you want to park 50 miles off of Mercury for some reason. On your way to Albuquerque to crash into something, you know. That's where you're going to use that. So in other words, your transmission, your engine is good for deep space or all the way to Mercury. You know, and then you shift into something else. Um, so that's pr pretty handy, pretty convenient. Fits my theory. Yeah, this is total confirmation bias of me. <laughs> Why else would I do it? I can barely run an OBS... Uh, recording device so the next tweet is a pretty picture of terahertz going in and out of something metal gratings this is what your metamaterial looks like say so, oh here we are let's run pull this part of space through whatever degrees that is anywhere from interstellar to near mercury pull that in pull that through our skin pull that through our reactor and then blow it out this side just like a submarine pumps and a lot of other uh, things in nature do, do similar things. Pull it in, shrink it, blow it out the other end. Your car does it, whatever. Just in a convoluted way, but it does it. Because that light in the fuel that you're, exp you're exploding, that light slash heat, that's shrunk down into a... Hydrocarbon, when it expands, when it, you know, when it combusts, it blows up back into its old size because it's thousands of times bigger than those hydrocarbon atoms. So when you have these, even though it's got a s small momentum to it or a, a momentum mass, whatever that's called, it's going to come in and it's still going to blow up. That's why you have force against the uh, cylinders and so forth. Anyway, getting off the, on a tangent. So, well, this kind of, sh this shows it, roughly. You know, looks good. So, I say, so there you are, able to capture a nice wide range of explosive mass equivalent momentum 
carrying photons, which space is packed with conveniently. That's what's out there, light. So we pull it in, shrink it, explode it out the other end. Sooner or later you're going to get somewhere, and you're going to get there quickly, efficiently, because you can do it on tiny atom-sized little exploders or waveguide size. Those are, it adds up. To me, it adds up. So you're doing that, you're grabbing all that free light out there, with getting all that momentum, all that mass equivalence, because you're getting thrust out of it, technically, with the mass equivalence. I'm not making that up, Adam, Adam Einstein. Albert Einstein came up with that one. And whoever, whoever came up with the momentum, same thing. It's there to use, it's free. But you have to make the special equipment to use it. Which, we're at the point where we can do it. That's what this stuff, these things, if you follow me on Twitter, which I recommend if you're interested, that's what all this stuff is. That's, it's just not put together right yet, or, you know, they have other uses for it so far. But they will, mark my words, will be doing it this at some point. Because it's hardwired into nature. I don't make the rules, I'm just telling you. So, uh, where am I? So there you are, blah, blah, blah. You got all the momentum photons, and you pump, and here I am, I'm <clears throat> quoting myself here. Pump them through your skin point by point at what? 10 to the 15th power per second or to the 17th. There's a range there. I mean, that's just what they can do now in the lab. So that means your thing is approaching the speed of light. All right? If you just put this stuff together the right way, I say it'll do that. But again, I don't make the rules. That's just the way it, it is. I'm just pointing it out. All right. I think. Unless I'm wrong. Comment in, in the uh, comments if you think any of this is uh, wrong. Uh, let's see. The next tweet is another pretty picture. Optical switch uses polaritons to take... All right, this... this this shows you what a, one of these meta material meta surfaces would be, you know, one way they might work. These polaritons and excitons and, oh, what's the other one? Every day I look at it right now, I couldn't tell you what it's called. Plasmonics. They control the light coming through, you know, coming in, coming through and going out. And, you know, they can be made to sense the light and compute and, say, you know, and you layer the functionalities on top of each other. It's a lot harder than it sounds, but this is one of your layers. Once you get the general idea, then you just perfect it. Yeah, sounds simple enough, right? So, anyway, that's the... That's that tweet there. And I like it. It shows a control pump. You know, the next layer is the sensor in, sensor out. The next layer is the computer that's adding all these things up. What's going on? Where are we? What do we want to do with it? Then it issues the order to do it, etc. and so forth. That's why these things bob around so fast and uh, quicker than your eye can blink. I think. So, anyway, the next uh, tweet is sort of summarizing and comparing it to the submarines. And I'm still talking to the alien scientist, and I'm saying, quote, it's pretty much the same principle as these bad boys, which exist and unquestionably work. So what I'm saying here is, is hey, it's already, this is no, this is nothing that novel. The idea of pumping something to move through it. I mean, a fish can do it. A squid can do it. These submarines are doing it. 
These are the most advanced ones. They don't have propellers anymore. They're, they have pumps or are pumps like this one. That's a pump on wheels. And this Virginia class looking thing, yeah. That's why they're quiet. That's the submarine in the movie uh, with the Red October. Well, we're here now. They've had those for a while. So we're going to do the same thing in space, only better than this. And we're going to do it underwater, too. Same thing. All, you, know, you have to have a bubble around it, a cavitation, as they call it, especially in water. Well, you're going to have a cavitation in air, too. Uh, that's been covered on previous videos. Like and subscribe. Now, and here down here, I'm still selling this. Uh, pumping idea, all with no, with no infinitesimally, infinitesimally tiny, yet energy hogging, meta, ultra, uh, pedagogical special sauce, space time metrics to fuss with. What I'm saying is this is a lot easier, simpler, feasible. Maybe someday you can deal with space time and plank lengths and all this, which there's no reason to give it up. But what I'm saying here is what I'm trying to promote here is something tangible, feasible, doable now. You start there, maybe someday you get down to the plank lengths. Don't give up, don't be discouraged. But if you're spending money on this, uh, I think uh, you might want to throw a few bucks into this kitty because it's right and it's right now. And here I say, well, here's why, you know, look. When you're talking about warping space, in my opinion, and correct me in the comments if you have a different opinion, you're talking about something, according to this tweet here, interacting with something smaller than the entire universe is large relative to us. A plank is 10 to the minus 35 uh, zeros smaller than us, but the entire universe is 10 to the 26 meters larger. So you're talking about trying to interact with something smaller than the entire universe is large because we're one or two meters. At most, most people. These are meters with minus 35 zeros and plus 26 zeros. And if we look at this thing here, this little graphic on this tweet, you're seeing that you might want to start with a photon, which is you know, nanometers. You can't see them, but you can almost, you know, you're only a factor of 10 away. You're only a zero or two away, depending on your glasses. And, da, 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 da. but you're not 35 zeros away. So I'm saying be tangible. Look at these atoms here to the minus 10. Minus 35 is a lot more zeros. I mean, a helium, we can see these atoms with uh, high-end microscopes. So they're in our ballpark. People think of those as small, but they're not small compared to a plank length. Anyway, enough lecturing on that. That's what, I'm just, just trying to make a sales pitch here. Anyway, so moving on to the next tweet is dual control. That's just another... That's a perfect terahertz observer and uh, absorber in this certain range. So if you're you know if you're cruising past the 4.5 to 9.8 terahertz range, which is pretty warm, I guess that would be around if 10's near Mercury, that's getting close anyway. So it's some um, material. I don't know what. Let's see what it is here. Just for fun. What is it? It is it is made out of vanadium dioxide metamaterial 
polarization, independent. Well, that's the kind of stuff, you know, we'll be building spaceships out of. You want a layer of that, then you want a layer of this. Until you, until you perfect it. But to get started, you want that. Because whatever that is, that's going to float around in space and absorb and emit. So you take it and you control what side it's coming in, what side it's going out, to control which way you want to go, in my opinion. Now, this is a little graphic I made to get interest. It goes too fast, so you have to keep looking at it. But I wanted to keep the photon-looking shape around the thing moving. And it has, it's a trade-off between do you want speed or do you want the other thing. So anyway, take a look at that. Look at it ten times. You'll be able to read the whole thing. I'll read along with it roughly a couple of times here. It, it basically says uh, what we've gone over here today so far. I tried to practice this and it sounds goofy to me, but um, it uh, if you watch it a couple of times, you get it. So let's wait for it to come around. And now I'll start reading. I'll just start reading randomly. Gravity resistance. Okay, offsets the mass. How? I told you that. And it's free. And why would you use it? And it's temperatures. And those are the temperature ranges. And that's what it's in space. And we work like a submarine. And we recirculate in, through, out, and around. Gravity resistant mass equivalent. Nano pumps, waveguides, consistently, coherently, efficiently, etc., and so forth. So if you read that over and over again, you will uh, look at it a couple of times, and you'll you'll see what you just heard, and you make a bubble around it. And if you're in a bubble of light, physicist, and you're controlling that with your mass, you're sitting in your chair controlling what you're in. And that light is not subject to gravity to the extent the mass is. If you have, here's my question for you, if you have enough light around it and moving through it at these high speeds in these, uh, in this uh, perfect or near, per, you know, optimal energy density of these skins and reactors, Pretty soon, I think the gravity or the lack of, well, the gravity and inertia around the mass will be mitigated due to this momentum, due to this mass equivalent thrust, and all that stuff. But I haven't seen where physicists have looked into this. Now, you know, it, to me, it, it looks like a fluid, uh, fluidics type problem and I'm starting to look more and more into that a little bit to see see what's uh, relevant to this anyway the next tweet is uh, this is another paper these are all scientific papers and here's a one about absorption and phase modulation in graphene which graphene and graphene, good place to start. We already have this stuff. You can dope it. You can decorate it, they call it. You can adjust it and tweak it and do all kinds of things with it. And it's pretty light in the first place. It's very strong. Been over that before. It's going to, uh, uh, you know, moves heat and moves photonics. It moves electronics, magnetics, all that stuff you want to start with and you build from there and this this tweets about something in the two point what is that two point three terahertz or something roughly so what's that gonna be that's not as hot as near mercury I don't know what temperature that is but somewhere in space 
These lines here represent the photons of space coming through there, in and back out. Just pretend this is the surface of a, of a ship. You, that's a little pump right there. Comes in, pulls that space, and, you know, every one of these is working at the same time. Now, this one is pushing it out that way. You know, it depends. You may want to pump it through the skin, push it out the other side of the thing. I don't know if this guy's making a left or right, whatever. Let's hope he has a turn signal on. But that's what it's good for. In my opinion, at least. This is the last tweet here, winding up, of that uh, thread to alien scientists. And this is kind of, a, this is a funny tweet. Um, links to funnier stuff. Which I don't want to play here because I'm not sure I have the... Uh, music copyright but you want to look you know you don't want to violate anything because you'll get ads on your video or possibly strikes you don't want that but i strongly suggest you click on that hilarious tweet and i think we're about done let's see what we've got to mention here oh this uh this is a previous uh video Kind of relates to what we're talking about on these skins of these things. We just looked at a tweet that looks kind of like this. This is me going into more detail on that. On what exactly, this is a photon coming in, going through, blowing out. And this is 20 minutes here. Double the speed in 10 minutes. You might have more clarity on that. Uh, this is that summary level thing you gotta keep looking at it until you get it you can't read it quick quickly enough the first time through a couple of times i don't know test yourself um this this means i'm winding down here i think i think so i don't know what the time is but it looks like i've covered everything i wanted to say here except i'm gonna do another video shortly i'm still working on this this is the big white whale here for me to get this done. This is why I've been not um, doing videos, but I, got, I, got, I have the urge to talk about it. So preparing this thing gets me in the mood to talk, but I'm not ready to talk about that yet. But I can do a couple of these short ones. So that means it's probably time to turn on the music and leave. Thank you for attending.